Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. For those who don't know, today is a special day. Amen. A lot of people call it Easter. I like to call it Resurrection Sunday. That's right. Come on. Amen. Uh, in case you don't know why, that's because he got up. Come on. Yeah. Out of the grave. You see, the power of the gospel is that Jesus not just died for our sins. You know, we always talk about Jesus died for our sins. A lot of people die, but Jesus got up from the grave. Amen. This separates him from everyone, this sets him apart from every single person that has ever lived and ever will live. And this, in case you didn't know, uh, this is the power of God demonstrated. And can, God wants us to have this demonstrated in our lives. So uh, we're going to come to him today with that attitude of worship and thanksgiving for what Jesus did. And we're going to celebrate what he has done in our lives. Because after he got up from the grave, he sent us the comforter. He sent us the Holy Spirit, which lives in us. So we can connect with him and commune with him as one. Amen. I want to ask you to stand as we uh, read the call to worship scripture in Psalm 16. Old Testament prophecy of Christ rising from the grave. It says, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Why? Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one C decay. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ to be our substitute, to die in our place because we have sinned. Lord, you say that for all have sinned and fallen short the glory of God. But Lord, you also said that you yourself took on your body our sin on the cross lord we thank you. thank you we thank you for what you did for us and we thank you that what you do for us every day yes. but most importantly lord we thank you for giving us proof of your godness your power giving us proof that you are god in the flesh by getting up from the grave. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you have sent us your Holy Spirit to empower us. Mm -hmm. And today, Lord, we want to take time and recognize you. Yes. Lord, we want to invite you in our presence today yes. as we worship you. Yes, Lord, I know we are but dust. Uh -huh. Lord, I know we are sinners, mm -hmm. but we know we are saved by your grace. And we thank you for that, Lord. Yes. And as you usher your presence here with us today, Lord, we ask that we will be edified by your spirit. Lord, I pray that you would speak to every heart that's here today. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
How many of you believe that Jesus Christ lives today? Well, whether he lives or not, whether you believe it or not, he does live. And we're going to sing this as worship and praise him. Join with the choir as we sing Because He Lives.
How many of you know that our life is worth living just because he lives? This is because in him is life. And he gives us abundant life. And this abundant life, we can live every day. We're going to now have our morning prayer by one of our deacons. is always there. So today, you all gather here to hear what the pastor has to say or what thus says the Lord. Now we're going to listen intently and enjoy this, this day that the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. May we pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we'll gather here, oh Father God, in your house as a testimony, O oh Lord God, that we believe in you, that we come here every chance we get to serve you at this place that you have given us. O oh Lord, but we know that we can serve you any place. Yes. You are with us wherever we go. You are a great God, a mighty God that has no equal. And O oh Lord God, if we would but stop a moment and see the work that, have, that you have done, you are the creator of everything, everything. We could not think of anything that was not made by you. Well. And we, O oh Lord God, know that he put it in our presence so that it would confirm him. If you have any doubt, just look around you. Check out the blade of grass, the flower, Jesus. the sun, the wind. Oh, Lord God, <coughs> the birds, the bees, the animals, and your life. Just examine your body to see what a wonderful creation it is. That this is God. And oh Lord God, we're happy to serve you. Yes, Lord. Now I ask, oh Lord God, is there anyone sitting here today that has doubt in their mind? That don't know God? Oh Lord God, this is an opportunity. Yes. This is a brand new day that we have not seen before. And which we will never see again in which to come to you and declare you as our Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord. To honor what Jesus done on the cross. Jesus did all that so we might have a right to the tree of life, to salvation, redemption, to turn from our evil ways, O oh Lord God, and embrace you, the giver of all life. I ask, O oh Lord God, to bless the sick and shut in among us, those could be here and those cannot. The have and the have nots, for you love us all. And I ask, O oh Lord God, that you would help us to shut out all things that might interfere with what the message about Jesus is today. Put it all aside and concentrate on what thus says the Lord is delivered by our own Reverend Barnes. In the name of Jesus, amen.
hope of salvation. Hope of salvation. A strong deliverer. continue to praise him Amen. with the choir and our next lyrical selection. Join in with the choir as we praise our Lord and Savior.
that's the blood of Christ. And in case you're wondering how it works, understand this, it's the blood of Christ that gives us salvation. Now, I know it's not good math or you don't understand the science where you got something real dirty and filthy like sin. If sin is dirty and filthy, you take some red blood and wash it, it's white as snow. That is God's math. This is the way God does things. And that blood never loses power. Never loses power. We're going to continue on our worship service uh, with our announcements and our welcome from Sister Siobhan Logan. Good morning, Mount Olive. All right. Mount Olive is busy. I have a lot of announcements this morning. My first announcement is the deacons and deaconess ministry wants you to know, wants you to know that if you cannot be here on first Sunday to partake in communion, uh, you can get communion at any time. So you can just please see a deacon or a deaconess. If you miss communion on first Sunday and you're here another Sunday and you would like to receive communion, please find one of the deacons and the deaconesses and they can help you with that. First Lady Belinda Barnes. Raise your hand. She's in the back back there. She has little treats or goodie bags for the children today. So if you have any children, please see Sister Barnes on your way out after service today. And she has a special uh, prize, I mean, a special gift uh, for you. So should you miss a Sunday or you want to know what is going on here at Mount Olive, Mount Olive does have a website. At the end of service today, this QRL code will be in the back. You can scan it with your cell phone and it will take you to the Mount Olive website where you can save that page uh, so that anytime you want to know what I'm announcing up here this morning or what is going on at Mount Olive, you can just go to our website and you will always be kept up to date. The Shallow Baptist Church presents Mammogram Mobile. So on Saturday, April the 15th from 10 to 2 p.m., you can go to 745 Park Avenue or Shallow Baptist Church and where they'll be giving free mammograms. Um, women's health is very uh, important. Uh, so if you uh, don't have an opportunity to get your annual mammogram, here's an opportunity for you to get one for free at Shiloh Baptist Church on Saturday, April the 15th. This will also be in the back if you want to take a picture or to write it down so that you can remember about this event. The Golden Years Ministry will be taking a trip to the the Barn Dinner Theater in Greensboro, North Carolina on August the 1st. If you are interested in attending, uh, the cost of the trip is $175, but you must reserve your, um, the final payment is due on July the 2nd. So please see Sister uh, Deaconess Dorothy Ransom or Sister Sandra K. Smith if you have any additional questions about this event. If I could right now, I would do like a drum roll kind of sound, like da 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 Mount Olive, this is the what anniversary of the one Raymond R. Barnes? Which one is it? Yeah. That is right. That's right, that's right. Get excited. In the month of September, we will be having a weekend long celebration. We're going to party all day and all night in celebration. That's right. 
So on September the 16th, that will be an event at the Mari Center. Um, if you would like to attend, you can see Sister Harriet Mick, Deaconess Harriet Mickle. She has all the information if you would like to attend this banquet on September the 16th. And then Sunday on September the 17th, we'll be having a 10th anniversary celebration where we will have a daytime speaker, which will be Reverend Gerald Parker Jr. And we will have an afternoon speaker, which will be Reverend Lee Arrington. So we'll be celebrating all day. We would love to see all of these wonderful faces out here celebrating 10 wonderful years with our pastor in September. All right, those are all of the announcements I have this morning. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge and recognize any visitors that we have. Please, if you would like, you can stand and introduce yourself and someone will bring you a microphone. Don't be shy. All right. <laughs> Say something now. What is what's up? Oh, my name is Gael. My name is Ernest. And we are visiting from New York. And we are with Evelyn and Aaron. All right. And this is Julian. Hey, Julian. <laughs> He's eight months. <laughs> you want to say something? <laughs> you just want to play with the mic. No, okay. No, you can't. <laughs> My name is Ian Spencer. Good morning, church. I'm here with uh, Artavia, the choir. I'm happy to be here this Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. All right. Well, I just want to say that we are thrilled that you all came to worship with us today on this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection, uh, this Resurrection Sunday, as we celebrate the fact that our Lord is indeed risen. And we want to thank you for coming to celebrate with us. And we want to say that we hope that something that you all see, hear, or experience here today will encourage you to come back and worship with us. We have worship service every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And we have Bible study on Wednesdays. You can join us online at 7 p.m. Uh, if you forget that, you can take a picture of that QRL code in the back, and it'll remind you about our Sunday services and all the events that we have here at Mount Olive, and we hope to see you there. All of their announcements will come from the pulpit. Let the church say amen. amen. We are so grateful that God has afforded us another opportunity to come to his house of worship on Resurrection Sunday. And I believe just as he was resurrected, that God has resurrected some things uh, in your life, amen? And with that being said, you ought to give God praise, amen, because our God is more than satisfying. He's more than great. I pray that you have been enjoying the service thus far. I won't be redundant and repetitive and repeat all the announcement, but I want to say uh, thank you all for coming out and supporting our Good Friday service on last Friday. We had such a wonderful time in the Lord. And I would like for all of the speakers that was speaking on Friday to stand at this time that we can recognize our speakers for last Friday night, Good Friday. Amen. They all did such a marvelous job. My heart is still full. We had such a wonderful time in the Lord on last Friday. And if you wasn't here, let me say you missed a hallelujah, a good time. Amen. And it's just so good to see everybody out here today with your families and your friends as we celebrate our Resurrection Sunday. We thank God for your presence on today. But I would be remiss if I didn't take time to stop and say, uh, Sister Vincent is in the house. Can, can you stand? Can you, can, you, can you stand, Sister Vincent? Can, can she stand? She looks so pretty. Can you stand? Because we can see you. And we want you to... Amen. One of our faithful trustees. And we want to give you a mic to have you to say something if you like. 
If you want to say something, we're going to afford you the opportunity. I just want to say good morning to the Mount Olive members and the guests who are here at Mount Olive. I missed you. Oh. And I'm so glad that God is good. All of us know him. Amen. I knew I wouldn't be coming back regular, but today I am here. Yes. And I thank God for that. Amen. He is good. So I'll be seeing you around. Amen. Okay. Amen. Pretty as a button. Amen. Let's bless God for her. Amen. Amen. A faithful, faithful member of Mount Olive Baptist Church. God bless you. We love you. And I hope that we can see more of you. Uh, see more of all of you. Amen. For this is the Lord's house. There's no need to be ashamed to come in, into God's house. Because he died for all of us. He poured out his love on the cross of Calvary. That's why we are all here today celebrating the resurrection. Uh, with that being said, I pray that you will govern yourselves accordingly to all the announcements. And we want to bless God for our worship leader, our brother Woodson. Amen. He's sharp today, too. Amen. Amen. The brother is clean, clean, Mr. Clean. Amen. But we want to move on with service. We ain't try, trying not to hold you long today because I know you probably have other activities that you have planned. But let's just bless God for this glorious day. Amen. The sun is shining. Amen. Everything is well. So let's call on this dynamic worship leader as we continue with our resurrection service. Amen. Wow, praising God is a privilege. And part of that privilege is giving back to God how he has blessed us. Now, sometimes we look at our bank accounts and we don't feel too blessed. But understand this. God allows you to be able to wake up in the morning and he allows you to be able to uh, get all the stuff that you have to survive food and water and clothes. You got a shelter. God gives us these things. And this is a true blessing. Amen. So let's think about him as we uh, have our tithes and give back to the Lord. Amen. Will you stand for the tithing declaration? The tithe is giving back to God a portion of what he has blessed us. It is the giving of our time, our talents, and our finances. Tithing symbolizes all the ways we have been blessed by God. We lift our hands and stand with glad hearts that we can give and that we desire to give. So let us bring our tithe and our offerings to the Lord as he has prospered us. For the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of giving. Amen. We'll ask the ushers come forward.
please stand? they were given. May it bring a blessing here at Mount Olive Baptist and to whom it served. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Before we move on to our uh, sermonic election, we have a couple of announcements by uh, Dr. Edney. Good morning, Mount Olive. Good morning. On this Hallelujah Resurrection Sunday, all Christ has risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Just have a couple of quick announcements, and the first is that Mount Olive Baptist Church. The Baptist General Convention of Virginia thanks you, thanks you, thanks you. On last weekend, we had the mega retreat, and not only did Mount Olive bless us through transportation, but he blessed us, Mount Olive blessed us with deacons being there. We had the women, we had the children, we had youth sponsors there, and we give God the glory. And I know that you're going to be seeing some of the great things that our young people learned and that they're going to share with you because you took time to invest in them. And so we thank you for that. We thank you. June, They'll be coming back for the annual session. So get ready, get ready, get ready. We want you to come and participate. There are lots of, um, of um, sessions that are open and free to the public, and we want you to be a part of that worship experience. Also, on behalf of Digging Joseph Edney and myself and the entire uh, Butts, Clements, Edney family, we want to thank Mount Olive for being with us and supporting us in our time of um, the passing of Vivian Clements, Vivian Butts Clements. For many years, she was a faithful member here at Mount Olive, an officer, and so was her husband, Diggin uh, William Clements. And so it did our hearts good to see you there and to hear from you and just to know that you were praying for us. And so we thank you to God be the glory. Great things he has done. We're going to continue with our worship, with our sermonic selection, after which the next voice you will hear will be from our pastor, Reverend Raymond R. Barnes. Yeah. 
and say
If it wasn't for the cross, if it wasn't for the cross of Calvary, if it wasn't for the cross, we thank God for the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. Why? Because Jesus decided to stay on that old rugged cross just for me. Amen, somebody. Amen. Love, 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 love. Love kept him on that old rugged cross. You up to be glad about it. Amen. Thank you, choir, for reminding us about the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greetings to you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, the deliverer of our precious souls. And one good thing about it, we know that his grace is sufficient to meet all of our needs, amen. We do bless God on today. Uh, we bless God for our worship leader, Reverend Woodson, amen. Uh, Dr. Edney and Reverend Avery and to the diaconate ministry, God bless you. And to the trustees with Sister Vincent in the house, amen. God bless you all and to the officers and the members and to the guests we have today. I pray your name in the name of our Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's good to be here today, amen? amen. In spite of what you're feeling and in spite of what you're going through, it's good to be here. I uh, thank you for your continued prayers for my mother, uh, whom I had the opportunity, the neededness to spend time with her in the hospital. So I'm asking you to continue to pray. Pray for her, amen. amen. And one good thing about being a preacher, the word tells us to preach in season and out of season, amen. amen. Because God is just that good. Amen. amen. Give yourselves a hand today. Amen. Uh, let us stand as we reverence the word of God on this resurrection Sunday. Coming from the gospel according to St. Matthew. Hey, Arian. How you doing? I'm good. What? Ooh, got a beard, mustache, more than pastor. How old are you now? 18. God is blessing. Fine, young man. Amen. It's good to see you, my brother. Amen. Gospel according to Matthew 8, two verses, five and six. And the angel answered and said unto the women, brother, listen, now he said to the women, where were the brothers? I don't know, but anyway. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. You may be seated in the presence of Christ. And I want to talk from the theme today, a new ending to an old familiar story. A new ending to an old familiar story. Throughout last week, what we call Passion or Holy Week, we pause to remember the events that led up to the crucifixion and the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday, with Christ's triumphant entry into the city on the back of a donkey. 
Monday was a day of authority for Jesus, for he commanded and cursed the fig tree. Tuesday was a day of conflict. Wednesday was a day of seclusion, a, a day of discipleship training and prayer. Thursday was a day of fellowship in the upper room. Friday was a day of humiliation, suffering, and sacrifice. Saturday was a day of mourning as all Jerusalem laid in silence and in suspension. But then Saturday's sadness gave away to Sunday's splendor. A new life had begun. Old things were passed away, and behold, all things had become new. Early on Sunday morning, the dawning sun welcomed the victorious sun, and the heavenly host celebrated that history had indeed been rewritten. A new ending to an old familiar story. Our soul's salvation had been assured. Hungry man had been fed the bread of life. Thirsty man had been quenched with living waters. Sin sick man had been healed by the great physician. Wayward man had been guided home by the bright and morning star. Resurrection Sunday, this Sunday, was a day of freedom, a day of liberation, a day of emancipation. Death, hell, and the grave could no longer restrain us because Christ had come as the warden to set the captives free. God had sent heaven's salvations for earth's damnation and gave all of us a new ending. If that didn't move you, let me tell you that the story of the suffering of Jesus Christ has all the elements of a good drama. First, we have the rise and the fall of a hero. Then there's political intrigue in the halls of power leading to the decision to eliminate Jesus Christ, who they considered to be their enemy. There's betrayal by a close friend and desertation by the rest. There's a humiliation, a humiliating trial by the conspirators intent on inciting the passion of the multitude. There's long, dramatic march toward his impending death. And ironically, the same crowd that sang his praises just a few days before have now come to mock him. And you know what? It was a shameful, shameful death because he was crucified with criminals, one on the left and one on the right. One of them was mocking him as a fraud, like he wasn't the real Messiah. And the other acclaiming him as the true man, the holy man of God. And finally, there's a painful, tragic death accompanied by darkness and mystery. So this morning, we must ask ourselves this question. Was this man that was crucified truly the son of God, king of the Jews, or simply another innocent man crushed by the forces of the powerful? How we answer this question determines what we believe to be the ultimate truth about life itself. Was the crucifixion of Jesus Christ the end of the story? Or do you believe in the resurrection? It isn't difficult for us to believe in the passion and crucifixion of Jesus because it's such an incredibly human story. We live it out every day. And when we put our heroes on pedestals and then we watch them fall, 
we have a fascination with the fall of heroes. Charles I of England went from being a monarch with near absolute power to England's first king. He was convicted of treason. Richard Nixon started as one of the brightest political minds and ended up being forever synonymous with corruption. O.J. Simpson was one of the most famous football players in the world and even a movie star when a murderer trial brought everything he had crashing down. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, and the best-selling music artist in the world fell from grace when the scandalous 13-year-old boy slept sleepover tarnished his reputation. The divorce of Prince Charles and Princess Diana, you get the story, when the so-called elite and powerful make mistakes and the high and the mighty are brought down, we identify with the crowd shouting accolades one minute and discuss the next. We're also familiar with the kind of intrigue that will plot to do away with the enemy. In America, we call it politics. We're fed a steady diet of scandal, intrigue, and violence in the news. And when we don't get our feel that way, what we do, we go out and buy some cheap supermarket tabloid that makes a fortune on speculation and false accusation. When was the last time you brought one? All the elements of the suffering of Christ are common occurrences for all of us. So it is not difficult for us to believe in the tragic death of Jesus Christ. But what about the resurrection? I, I know you believe in the death, but do you truly believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Our biblical text, Matthew 28, 5 and 6, declares, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord laid the Bible declares that the story did not end with the grave of Jesus Christ. Despite the fact that everyone involved in the drama, the religious leader, the politicians, the crowd, the guards, the disciples, Jesus' own family, his so-called friend, and even us, we all believe that Jesus' death on the Christ would be the end of the story. But glory to God because the women went to the tomb, the tomb expecting to minister to a dead man. The crowds went home believing that Jesus was dead and that he was done. The disciples even gathered for prayer in fear that they would be next. The politicians washed their hands of the whole incident and continued with business as usual. And the so-called religious leader, they scrambled to plug up any holes in their hierarchy by bribing the guards at the tomb and to testify that they witnessed Jesus Jesus' body being stolen from a grave. Yes, they all believed that Jesus' death on the cross would be the end of the story. But I ask you, on this Resurrection Sunday, do you believe that the death of Jesus Christ was the end of the story? <laughs> to all of you who may be watching on social media or sitting in here today listening, the death of Jesus Christ is not the end of the story. Y'all don't quite see it yet. If you open the greatest book in the world, the Bible, you will see in John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Acts 3, 5 and 15. Uh, you kill the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. Uh, 1 Peter 1 and 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because in his mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they, they proclaim the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
And can I tell you that the resurrection of Jesus Christ means that believers are justified before God. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. So through the gospel resurrection about Jesus Christ, though they differ somewhat in detail, they all tell us of witnesses to a resurrected Lord whose lives were changed by that encounter. So in the four books of the gospel, they put a new ending on the crucifixion story. Instead of remaining in defeat, and despair after the scandalous death of their leaders, that their leader, the disciples eventually had a new ending for their story, which they told with unwavering courage and faith in order to bring the message of God's love and salvation to all people. Something happened after the death of Jesus that dramatically changed their witness. And as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the first thing that I must establish is that it is impossible to be a Christian if you do not believe the facts about the resurrection. No one who, who rejects the story uh, of Calvary or the crucifixion and its purpose has the right to carry the title of a Christian. If we are here to celebrate Easter, then we are here to celebrate that Christ died. I said he died, but on the third day, Glory to God. He arose with all power in his hands. I ask you again on this day of Resurrection Sunday, do you believe there's a new ending to an old familiar story? We, we, we live thousands of years removed from the events of the scriptures. But what do we make of the resurrection. Can we believe in the truth of the resurrection, the victory over, or, or of life over death and the good over evil all around us? Can we believe that through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, we received the love and the salvation of the almighty God? Can we believe that the resurrection of Jesus has the power to recreate our own lives and rewrite the end of our very own story? Well, so much depends on how we answer these questions. What is at stake is the way we live our lives and where we will spend eternity in the life to come. And let me ask you, what do you believe to be most true about life? What images of reality are uh, shape how you live and what you pursue? You're not alone if you, re you reject the truth of the gospel story concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ because most of this world, they does not believe in his resurrection. The declares he died and he rose. And that's where so many Christians would be, uh, would be Christian stumble. They can believe that Jesus was sent from God. They can believe that God, man, was so filled with compassion for his brethren that he gave his life for their cause. But they have a very hard time believing that Jesus Christ got up out of the grave and so fulfilled the divine prophecies of scriptures. But you can't have the Easter story your way. Amen, somebody. Because we have to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And the truth is Christ died. He just didn't die but he died for your sins and he arose from the grave that you might attain salvation. Amen, somebody. Listen, if you will. Given choices in life, you, 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 you are absolutely free to make that choice on whether you believe in the resurrection or not. But please be aware that it has its consequences. Your interpretation of the gospel story affects how you think about yourself and even others. 
It affects what you believe to be important and even true. If the gospel story does not frame your understanding of life, I want you to know that the world has plenty of images and stories to offer for your consideration. And you make your decision alone. You can choose to take care of number one first and believe in the resurrection. You can believe that the majority rule. You can believe that only the strong survive. You can believe believe that there isn't enough to go around, so we got to hang on to what we've got. You can believe that you will gain security through your money, through your power and your own strength. You can believe that the end justifies the means, so eat. Go ahead and drink and be merry, for tomorrow you die, and that's there all to it. Yes, you can live your life believing whatever you want, whatever you wish, and many people do, but at what cost? But Jesus said to his disciples, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The resurrection of Jesus Christ released a new ending to the scripture story, and it can put a new ending to your own story. Somebody might ask, Reverend Barnes, what, what, what difference would it make if we really deep down inside believe the resurrection? Reverend Barnes, what difference would it make if this were the story that we tell ourselves and our children and each other about what is ultimately true? How would it affect how we live and what we pursue? Well, the first thing we should know, uh, the first thing we would know without a shadow of doubt is that we are loved. Love kept them on the cross, but love calls him raise up to rise up on the third day as well amen somebody we are precious to God who pursues us even into the grave in order to give us new life and what a great gift this would be for every one of us to know without a shadow of a doubt that we are loved eternally Knowing how much Christ loves us will lead us to think much more highly of ourselves and even esteem one another. You can't love Christ without loving me. Amen, somebody. Knowing how much Christ loves us, we wouldn't get wrapped up in so much frantic effort to prove our own self-worth. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't neglect, abuse, or kill anyone else who is precious to God. How much violence, pain, and suffering in the world would be eased with the sure knowledge that we are all loved by Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 8 declares, but God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died, died for us. In this new end to an old familiar story, the second thing we would know is that we are not alone in this world. If you heard nothing I said so far, Hear this, the resurrection of Jesus Christ brought us into communion with God. It brought us into communion with the God of all gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Amen? And what science is trying to teach us about our interdependence, God already knows. That's what the scripture has been trying to teach us all along. That's why Paul described the church as a body of Christ. What hurts one hurts all, and what's helped one helps all. Uh, we are meant to share each other's burdens and joys. We can no longer act as if we do, don't matter to anyone but ourselves. We can no longer use other people or the earth for our benefit without regard to the consequences. In the resurrection of Christ, we are made one so that we might work with the one heart, that we might work with one mind for the good of the whole. If we believe the resurrection, surely we will live with more awe, with more wonder at all that God has made and have profound gratitude for the role we have been given to play in God's creation. 
There is so much important work to be done. The work of healing human beings, relationships, communities, and even ecosystems. And through the resurrection of Christ, the disciples were made bearers of God's gift to the eternal life to the world. Can I tell you that God used the disciples to, to spread the news of the new ending to a tragic story. And just like the disciples, you got to get up off your blessed assurance and spread the news, the good news about the resurrection promise. And it's not, and it's not just a promise of life after death. It's a promise of a new life right now. If we really believe in the resurrection story, we would be a people of tremendous hope and courage. For we would know that no matter how bleak the circumstances, no matter how horrible the evil, no matter how powerful the force, ultimately, in the end, the story is God's story. And if it's God's story, you can't change God's story. Because if God said it, then God meant it. If God said it, then I believe it. So why are you trying to change the story about the resurrection of Jesus Christ when you know deep down in your heart that he rose from the grave? We have a role in here to be sure. But there's work, but there is at work a power greater than our power, making even the greatest darkness serve the light. Remember that God surprises us with the unexpected. <laughs> he makes a way out of no way. <laughs> he's compassionate and caring. <laughs> he's faultless and he's forgiving. He's loving and he's lasting. He's noble and needed. He's omniscient, omnipotent, and overwhelming. And he loves to rewrite the end of our story. But it all comes down to the choice of what you believe about the ending. Do you believe that darkness and evil has the last word? Did the story end for you with the blood that spilled down Calvary's hill? Are you content to let the world choose the end of your story for you? Or will you believe in the resurrection and the power of God to make all things new? There's some great news and some news about the resurrection. I'm almost finished. Listen, if you will. The resurrection means that Jesus was declared to be the son of God with all power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The resurrection means that we have assurance of our own resurrection. In other words, when you die, amen somebody, just as he was resurrected, you're going to be resurrected. The resurrection means that God has an e eternal plan for these bodies of ours. The resurrection means that Jesus has a continual ministry giving us a new story. The resurrection means that Christianity and our God are unique and completely different among the other religions of the world. It's different from Islam. Amen, somebody. It's from Mormon, amen, somebody. It's different from all of those other Hindu, amen, the Buddha religion, amen, somebody. The resurrection proves that though it looked like Jesus died on the cross as a common criminal, he actually died as a sinner man out of love and self-sacrifice to bear the of all of our sins. Uh, I don't know, but perhaps you come to the garden this morning to figure it all out. Uh, you come to hear the end uh, of the story. I know you came looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he isn't here. Uh, he has risen and he is risen. 
indeed. So why don't you let Christ rewrite a new ending to your old story? Amen, somebody. I know he can rewrite a new ending to your old story because God changed what the complicated philosophies of man could not. He changed what the detailed accomplishment of man could not. God changed what the in-depth knowledge of man could not. He changed what the scientific developments of man could not. God was so good that he rewrote the story and he changed what the most sincere efforts of man could not. God changed the end of the story and he can change the end of your story because God offered an unjust death as the road sign that points the way back to fellowship with him. He offered his own son, Jesus, for God's of the world that he gave us his only begotten son but that's not the end of the story because he didn't stop there he put a new ending on our dismal death sentence when he raised when he raised his beloved son Jesus from the grave and with his resurrection God can rewrite your ending with a new story he'll set you free from the sins of your past uh, why not let God rewrite your story today? He'll take you from being lost to being found. Uh, he'll take you from being doomed to being delighted. Uh, he'll take you from being guilty to being forgiven. He'll take from being needed to being complete. Uh, he'll take you from being dead uh, to being alive. Uh, alive in Jesus Christ, resurrected with him. The scripture says, fear not ye. For I know that you see Jesus, which was crucified, but he ain't him. <laughs> amen. I might got some Chinese looking, amen, somebody. <laughs> For he has risen as he has said. Come see. Come see. Brother George, come see the place where the Lord lay. In other words, when we see the place where they laid him, it's not the end of the story because we see that the father did not forsake his very own son, Jesus Christ. When we see the place where they laid him, it's not the end of the story because we see that death was conquered. Amen, somebody. When we see the place where they laid him, it's not the end of the story because we see that we have a living friend in Jesus Christ. I, I come to tell somebody this morning, whatever you are going through, it's not over. It's not over because God is still writing your story. Huh? When you look back huh, and see how God has rewritten your story, you'll see the prison from which you've been release. You'll see the wrath from which you've been saved. You'll see the filth from which you've been washed. You'll see the death from which you've been raised. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Same God, same love, same God, same peace, same God. Same joy, same God, but I got a new story. Come on and give God praise all over this place. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. He has risen. He has risen. And God will give you a brand new chapter in life. Come on and bless them all over this place. gospel is that the first thing we have to do is recognize what's wrong with our story. And once we understand that we are 
separated from that relationship with God because of our sin, we realize why we need God to write a new story. You see, Jesus died on the cross and arose on the third day for a reason. And the reason was to pay the debt from the wrath of God. You see, we're in debt to God. And God said the wages of sin is death. So the only way we can pay this is by death. That's why Jesus took our place and died for us. So we don't have to die. So him rewriting us a new story is really allowing us to be in right relationship with him again. He wants us to be in a relationship with him. And he would go as far as to come to earth, become a man, and to die a brutal death on the cross. But while he was here, you know, he explained some things to us. He shared with us how that he was God. And he showed us, you know, through some signs and wonders, things that he did. And we were like, oh, okay, yeah, that's wonderful. But then he died. And then we were like, man. And then he arose from the grave. This demonstrates the power. Now, I can go through all the evidence of Christ's resurrection, because there is evidence, by the way, for those who didn't know. Um, but God wants us to step out in faith. God wants us to believe him and what he says in his word. God wants us to trust him. So today, all of you get an opportunity to respond to this word. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have a right relationship with him, part of the new rewriting of your story is for you to share that with others. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you never connected with him in relationship, if you never surrendered your life to him, We'll give you an opportunity to do that today. You see, because God set this whole thing up and wrote this story so beautifully. And this story is your life. And God said he doesn't want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. So as you think about what Jesus Christ did and the power of the resurrection and how that gives you new life. He said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. This is what you have to do. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to now. Will there be one? Will there be one today who would come down down and say, God, I'm here. God, I'm going to give my life to you. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've done wrong. But I want to make that right with you today. If that's you, come on down. Understand that God loves you. He loves you to die in your place. Because the other alternative is to be separated from him forever. You know, we don't like to talk about hell, but hell is a place that God has set apart for those who reject him. And if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you are rejecting him. 
There's only, you know, two paths. One to God and one away from God. There's no... So if you want to accept God, you want to accept Jesus Christ, come on down. I'm inviting you now. Will there be... Praise him. I'm going to pray. want you to think about your story and how you would like it to end. Would you like your story to be ending with you in relationship with God forever, spending eternity with him? Or would you like it to end with your separated from him forever? Let us pray. Father God, we come to you now. Lord, we come to you knowing that you cannot accept sin and we are sinners so we know we're not acceptable to you the way we are so what you did is you sent Jesus to die in our place that makes us acceptable to you and we thank you Lord we thank you for sending Jesus Christ as our substitute to die in our place. But we realize that what you're asking us to do is to trust you and believe you. Lord, you're asking us to allow you to be the Lord of our life. That means you're asking us to allow you to be in charge of our lives. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the word that was preached. We thank you for your power through your Holy Spirit. Lord, and we pray for those who may not know you. Lord, we pray for those in here who do know you, that we'll be willing to share you with others. We'll be bold enough to speak up and tell people about you. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Now, as we approach this as the end of our service, remember this is not the end of our story. We can leave here today remembering what uh, was spoken to us, the word that was preached. And as you are going throughout, think about what God has said to you. what God calls you to, what he's asking you, asking of you. The scripture says, now may the God of peace who brought us up, the Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You're